basically, we got the law overturned in 1995 that bans literature and bans uh, videos about marijuana. I have since been charged 22 times since 1995. Um, with marijuana offenses. I've been jailed 17 times, and I will say proudly in eight out of 10 provinces. The only place I have not been jailed are Quebec, though I almost got clubbed in a near riot by Montreal police when they arrested the guy who organized the Quebec Cannabis Cup in 2002. And I have not been arrested in, in, in Prince Edward Island, though I did try on my summer legalization tour when I went across Canada to demonstrate there, there was no marijuana law. I did not, in fact, get arrested when I smoked out the Charlottetown police department, modest little detachment that it is. <laughs> and, uh, but I have been arrested in every other place, um, many times unjustly. Um, now, you, that's a common thing for people to get arrested, but in 2003, I went across 18 cities in Canada and smoked either a big bong, usually in the colors of the local sports team, if I could do it. And like, <laughs> in, like in Virginia, that was green and white for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, right? <coughs> and then when I went to Winnipeg, I took my Canucks bong that I had hand-painted, because that's the whole Manitoba Moose, their farm club's place, right? And every time I used a bong, I lost that bong and got arrested and put in jail. So there's something provocative about a big phallic device with a big testicular bottom there that you're <laughs> smoking up in front of this, like, oh, it's like a red flag to a bull. Whereas if I smoke it when I choke her, like a big joint that had one ounce in it. That I never got arrested once by doing so. <laughs> 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 I don't, there's nothing scientific in that. In fact, there's actually a better explanation why that happened. Because here's the thing. If I thought I was going to get arrested, hell, I don't want to lose more than a gram. I'll smoke down up and you haul me away and it's all gone. Right? But if I think we're going to get away with this, then we'll bring up that ounce. Right? We can smoke that for an hour. Right? And that's typically what happened. I got arrested in on that particular tour in 2003 uh, in Edmonton, Calgary, Regina, Winnipeg, Moncton, and St. John's, New Brunswick. St. John's, New Brunswick. So that covers five provinces there. Right? And uh, I actually got busted in, not busted, I, I did not get arrested in this time, but I got raided in this time. I've been raided, I didn't even finish that, 17 arrests and six raids, and they've taken a million dollars worth of my stuff at various times, right, in those raids. But I actually got raided once in Victoria, so I'll tell you that one, because I like, you know, everywhere I go, if I can tell you a story that I was busted here, I can have book for pot, then I, that's kind of nice, though, rock and roll is always trying to ingratiate themselves with local audience, like, oh yeah, rock and roll, Vancouver, or whatever, right? So I can actually tell you, I've been busted in your town, and most places I go to, right? <laughs> so I, I, uh, I had a place here, and uh, from the year 2001 to 2002, it was on Fernwood, it came, it's a nice place, and, uh, but anyway, so 4 o'clock in the morning, one day in March 2002, so it's like six years ago this month, you know, and I get getting a phone call, and you know what, I know, no phone call that comes very late at night is ever a good one. No one calls you to tell you when the lottery at 4 in the morning, hey, good news for you, no. It's usually really bad news that you don't want, or at the very least, inconvenient news. You're gonna have to go do something, get somebody, or something bad has happened. So you have to deal with it, right? Well, sure enough, it's called four in the morning, and I find that very clever that, you know. So the first kind of thing, the phone rings, they go, hello, is this Mark Henry? Yes. You know, well, this is the Victoria Police Department. We're outside your house. Really? Wow. And then they said, so we want to confirm. Do you have a child in the house and a woman with you? And I go, yes. And they said, okay, we, we want you to turn around, because they know where I am inexplicably, and walk out your front door and walk straight to the sidewalk. And I'm thinking, this is so weird. Like, you know, because at first I'm thinking, yeah, what if someone's just pulling my leg? Right? Because it seems unusually weird. But sure enough, so I go out the front door and I look around. I'm going, it's like empty. It's like a ghost area. I'm thinking, well, it's a good hoax if it is, right? But then I walk out to the sidewalk and all of a sudden, bang, eight big tough cops, a multinational, multiracial group of Nazis jumps out of the door, <laughs> right? And they come and they surround me like in no time at all. And I'm thinking, boy, you guys are big. You know, even the women are tough. Right? And they're all got Kevlar. And they all walk in that simian ape like way to intimidate you, like that you see security. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's like, what the fuck is the matter with you, right? But it's an oddly intimidating stance so that nobody even wants to think you're messing with them. Because they're like gorillas on patrol. And that, that, that's been t intentional. So they're all coming up and they're surrounding me. There's a black guy and a Chinese guy and a white woman and a black woman. I'm thinking, what? Well, at least your hiring policies are progressive, even if your Nazi details about waking people up in the middle of the night aren't, right? So anyway, I'm there, and I'm, I, I, I figure for the first time in life, you caught me, and I'm not breaking the law, so I'm extremely curious, and I'm also out there in my underwear, right? And you, know, you feel vulnerable when you're in your underwear, shut by eight big cops all guns and stuff like that, right? And they're saying, Mr. Emery, we, we uh, have a warrant to go inside your home and seize your grow garden. I'm going, what? You think I'm growing here? 
like, wow, that's, you know, that would be nervy of me, I would have to admit, that's a pretty heady thing to do with my reputation. I would have only been arrested like 12 times in the last couple of years, but I guess I could grow one with my children now. So anyway, at this point I'm feeling good, because this is the first time I've ever been, not even arrested yet, they're searching my home, right? They're gonna go through, and they, in fact, find nothing, and I found that was fascinating. So they go through, I said, go ahead, and he comes in my house, the head cock goes, well, I guess it's obvious why we're here. And I go, no, it's not obvious why you're here. Why are you here? Right? And I said, well, it's not marijuana. It's obviously a grow garden. I said, you think that's from a grow garden? That's that's the smell of my house everywhere I ever am. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and he says, well, well, we don't want your personal stash. I like when you time to use hip words, right, or contemporary words. We don't want your own stash. We're here for I said, well, listen, go look through the place. You're going to find nothing. So sure enough, they take a quick look, and a guy comes up. And boy, did they ever look sad and bummed out. <laughs> <laughs> and they walk forward, and then they all follow that person, they all troop out, troop, 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 right? And then he says, well, I guess you want an explanation? I said, yeah, I'm in my underwear at four in the morning, and your eight goons are just leaving my place. Yeah, tell me why. Right, and they said, well, we got a call from your neighbor, the cop next door. Fern <laughs> <laughs> Wedding Kings, and, uh, <laughs> and he called up because he said he smelled pot. He said, well, he's always going to smoke pot. We blow it out the window because the landlord doesn't actually let us smoke in here. Just because it reeks in here doesn't mean we smoke. And we blow it out the window, reasonably enough. And he picks it up, and then he called and said, well, it must be a grow guard, right? Now, it's weird because they, they did come, I got their discovery, right? So they came to my, after the cop next door calls the Victoria Police on me, that's a Wednesday. The cops come by with a warrant to check the meters on my property. I have to go meet a judge. Get a warrant. So they checked the electrical meter, which they said was was a little bit high. It was sixty-five dollars every two months. How can that be high? That's like I don't even know how we got it that cheap. That's gonna be the cheapest hydro meter in Victoria for a two-month period in the whole city during a cold weather period, right? And then they said, and then we sniffed your exhaust. So that here's what they're doing. They're getting more so they can sniff your dryer exhaust. So we sniffed your dryer exhaust and it smelled like weed to me. So we called up Check TV. I hope that guy's otherwise, you know. I, but we called him up and uh, they came and they said they went up and on a reporter, here I am, check new things. <laughs> it's vanilla bounce. You know, that's what you smell. You smell vanilla bounce, right? And I think, of course, because that's the only thing that comes out. How could pot be coming out of our dryer or something? It's connected to a clothes dryer, right? So anyway, I get some good mileage out. The local media comes to announce a market. We got busted, and it wasn't breaking the law. So that was news, right? You know, again. Get the police visit. So anyway, that was my bust here in Victoria. So I just go show you. Eight people, that's their whole shift. Like if they're hitting you at four in the morning, they didn't have nothing planned before you. No. Right? They all came at noon, they sat around, well, would you go disturb me? It's the deep of the night. Um, you know, well, he's gonna be home, right? And so uh, they come and get you four. And then when they're just where they troop on well. It's six o'clock, we the whole shift is gone, we made it go home. So what do they pay someone for that shift? Probably like three, two, three hundred dollars a day times eight times all the planning it took, right? <laughs> Getting the warrant on the Friday, sniffing my dryer exhaust, <laughs> hassling me and waking me up all with my own money. Tax money, you know, that I'm paying on this house. Right, and I'm thinking, wow, this must happen a lot, right? Because if some guy next door just thought my smoking pot was a grow garden, and now, uh, five days later, I've got a paramilitary army in my house, right? It shows how fragile our rights are, because what was it all about anyway? What is the most could I have had? I could have had some plans. People forget that 60% of this country, well, 100 years ago, was people working with plants. Most people were farmers in Canada 100 years ago. It's really lucky that 3% of all Canadians are farmers now. That 3% of all Canadians produce most of the food we consume in this country. Right? But it wasn't always like that. 120 years ago, it was 60% of Canadians worked from sunrise to sunset making food on farms. And you know what? People died of pneumonia, of all sorts of things all the time from tending those plants outside in the freezing cold all year long and cattle and animals and storing that food and transporting that food, very dangerous. Lots of people lost their lives in food production. So we are not a country that intuitively is afraid of things that come with plants and agriculture, like mildew and pests and, 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 you know, and this sort of thing. We're used to that. We're a country that was brought up by farming. Right, so all of a sudden now we're in a generation where they're breaking into your house and the best they can say is that grow up to produce mold. Mold, that's the worst I've ever heard, that grow up to produce mold, right? Because they don't kill you overtly, nobody's been electrocuted. The only five people have been electrocuted in British Columbia in the last 10 years over grow gardens, right? And not necessarily fatally. There's no incidence of booby traps in them. They typically, whenever we're raided, I've never yet met someone who fired at a cop or, or fought back at a cop or in any way tried to take on the cop. 
So what's the need for eight paramilitary people coming through the front door at four in the morning when they could have knocked at my door and said, Mark